It's now my pleasure to introduce Goodwell Enzo, who will speak on behalf of the undergraduate students. Goodwell. Well, I hope you guys are not going to be tweeting today about how he butchered my last name, but um, <laughs> it's all right. He's my friend. Don't do that, okay? Mangwanani, buenos dias, good morning. Mr. President, let me begin uh, with a few words of gratitude. We, the class of 2015, will receive our diplomas in a few moments, and thanks to dozens of people whose efforts we need to acknowledge. The professors, who's, uh, the professors who, put, who put up with us when we were half asleep, and when we were answering big global questions in research, the administrators to whom we complained regularly, the board of trustees who raised money for the facilities without which we would not be here today, the secretaries who saved us from, from sloppy paperwork, the maintenance workers who indulged in our messes, campus safety for keeping us safe even when we did not want to be safe. <laughs> Hashtag Podka Crow. <laughs> Shout out to Tammy out there. And most importantly today, families and friends. And since this is Mother's Day, special thanks to the mothers who are here today and those who are not, including mine. But my American mother is here today. Thanks, my huku. <laughs> These people have met us and have allowed us to soar. And on behalf of the entire class of 2015, thank you. Secondly, I would want to say a few words about the climate we live in and the message it is sending to those of us about to cross the stage. I was born in a, in a very remote village in Zimbabwe. And when I was 11 years old, I was bitten by a very poisonous snake. After about six weeks of visits to a traditional healer, to a crude clinic, and to a hospital without doctors, as my legs swelled up, and as I bent with pain and fever, I was finally taken to the capital city where the doctors finally amputated my right leg. When I returned home, my aunt, who is the sort of the head of the family, declared that there was no reason to send me to school because as a person with a disability, I had become useless. Something parallel is happening today in America. Young people are, to are being told that we cannot do better than our parents did that we will wind up living at home for years, that we will not find good jobs or build better tomorrows for ourselves or heal the ills that plague our planet. And I want to say to my fellow graduates, bullshit. When my aunt told me I had no future, something snapped in my brain. Rather than accept what she had said, and I want to make sure that you guys understand that in my culture, children are, to are, are taught to accept the wisdom of their elders without question. So when my aunt declared that I, I had become useless, I said to myself, no, I am not useless. I will succeed. And by working as hard as I could, by keeping my eye on, on my goals, and by giving myself no excuses. I did. I did. I surmounted a disability, a family of subsistence farmers without, with no understanding of the importance of education, extreme poverty, and a country with the world's highest rate of inflation of about 660 million percent. And here I am today on this stage.
So to paraphrase your president, yes, we can. Yes, you can. And I know that because I did. A famous phrase in my language, Shona, teaches us, if someone throws bricks at you, use them to build yourself a strong foundation and a t or a tower on which you can stand above those very people. So don't waste your zeal or your energy taking negativity seriously. Don't be easily daunted or, or be discouraged. Make yourselves proud. When the media and those around you tell you how things are going to be tough out there, remember Goodwill's construction tips. <laughs> Forge the discouraging words into building blocks and hoist them with all your strength and endurance. And construct an amazing and towering future for yourselves, for our planet, and for a generation that should not be underestimated. Thank you. <laughs>